So Joe texted in and he says he's having a ton of trouble with equations that have multiplication and division in them. And he'd like me to explain how it works. He says he gets the addition and subtraction problems, but that the multiplication and division ones seem a little harder. So Joe wants a little help working with the equations that have multiplication and division. So what I did here was write down a few uh, sample problems that include both of those operations. And really, Joe, um, it, you said that you pretty much understand equations that have addition and subtraction in them. And that's good, because uh, the same sort of thinking process goes along with solving multiplication and division problems. And that is that when you are solving an equation that has addition in it, you know that you need to subtract. And when you have a problem that has subtraction in it, you know that you're going to need to add so that you can get rid of the number that's along with the variable by doing the opposite operation. And that same process applies here. Let's take a look at the first problem and I'll show what I mean. Here we have 5 times x equals 25. Now since what we have uh, between the extra number we want to get rid of and the variable we want to keep by itself is multiplication, what we need to do is do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So we're going to divide both sides of the equation by the number that we want to get rid of. So we'll divide this side by 5, and we'll divide this side by 5. And when we do that, we have effectively have 5 divided by 5, which is just 1, and that leaves us with 1 x on the left hand side. Now obviously 1x is what we want because we usually don't even write the 1, we just have x. And that's going to be equal to 25 divided by 5 or just 5. So our answer then, just one single step, is to divide both sides by 5 and we get x equals 5. Now we can verify that's correct because if we were to say put 5 in place of x in the original problem, we'd have 5 times 5 which is 25 and that is correct so that we know that x equals 5 is a viable answer. Now a slightly more difficult version would be one that has say a fraction in it. Here we have 1 7th times x equals 6. And there's really two ways to solve this. We could either multiply both sides by 7, in which case it would be just like the last problem where the 7s would cancel and we'd have 6 times 7 on the other side. Or we can divide both sides since what we have here is multiplication. We can divide both sides by 1 7th, the fraction. I'm going to do this one that way because the next problem was kind of like the first way I described, so you can see both, op both options. So if I were to divide both sides by 1 7th here, then my 1 7th would cancel top and bottom, and I'd have 6 divided by 1 7th. Now this looks like a fraction over a fraction, which is always obnoxious and annoyingly difficult. So all we need to do is just write this as a linear problem instead of using a fraction bar. So instead of 6 over 1 7th, I'll write it out as 6 divided by 1 7th, which means exactly the same thing. And now that I have it written out that way, what I can do is use my rule for division. When I divide a number, and obviously 6 could be written as 6 over 1, oops, I need to use my brush tool, 6 over 1, then if I'm dividing numbers, all I need to do is invert the second fraction and multiply, right? So I'll take the second fraction and I'll turn it over, and we'll get one seven or seven over one instead of one seventh. So now I have six times seven over one because when I turn it over I do multiplication instead of division. So six times seven is forty-two, and one times one is one. So I can either write forty-two over one or just forty-two because anything divided by one is itself. So on the left-hand side now all I have is x, and on the right-hand side all I have is this forty-two. And I can verify that that's the correct answer again, because 1 7th of 42 is 6. So that's the right answer. Now I told you the last problem could be solved by just multiplying both sides by 7. We're going to do something similar here. This problem reads x divided by 4 equals 16. Well, I can solve it then by doing the opposite of division, which is multiplication. Multiply both sides by 4. And now the 4 on top and the 4 on the bottom will cancel. And I'll be left with just x on the left, and I'll have 16 times 4, or 64, on the right. And 64 divided by 4 is 16, so that's correct. And then our final problem here, this one could either be done as two steps. Either I could multiply both sides by 3, and then divide both sides by 2, or I could just divide both sides by 2 thirds. So let's do it that way, and we have it in one step. So if we divide this side by 2 thirds, then my 2 thirds and my 2 thirds will cancel. And if I divide 9 over 1 by 2 thirds, then what I need to do is multiply by 
the reciprocal, 3 halves. And I get 9 times 3, which is 27, and 1 times 2, which is 2. So then on the left-hand side, all I have is x, and on the right-hand side, I have 27 divided by 2, or half of 27, which is 13 and a half. There you go.